morning to you all and welcome to Daily Scuba News. Well, researchers have been researching uh, nitrogen narcosis uh, because they still don't really understand exactly what happens to you when you get narked. Um, there have been a few possible causes of nitrogen narcosis sort of theories, uh, and so far the best theory seems to be the change of neurotransmitters in the brain uh, compared to the dated lipid theory. Before I read whatever's happening, I've not read this story, <laughs> I did not script this one. This is at a late edition. Right, so the causes and effect of narcosis have always been tricky for the researchers to pin down because creating a test to measure narcosis that can be used repeatedly is a wee bit hard. Mm. Uh, narcosis impairs you both mentally and physically, but if you give a diver the same test twice, then they should do it better the second time because they've simply learned how the test works. Not because their, you know, their brain or hands are working faster or slower. Yeah. So the smart boys and girls from the three-year uh, FIPD project, it's short for something I can't remember. Oh, uh, short for Physiology of Decompression. <laughs> you wrote this script. <laughs> I know, it was a while ago. Um, so they basically found out that pretty much all of the risk factors, such as fatigue, anxiety, or heavy swimming, had actually very little effect on whether or not you get knocked or not. Heavy swimming? Uh, yeah, because you're working really hard. Oh, your body's like, getting tired. Like no, no. more weight to your <laughs> weighted Ooh. swimming. No. Um, so actually, they all the precursors like being dehydrated and all that kind of stuff. They're kind of like actually that had little effect on whether you're narked or not. Um, so they also found that everybody, everybody gets narked, and even experienced <laughs> divers, dude. <laughs> Because you, really you get some people that say, no, I, I don't get knocked or whatnot. It's like, no, I, I don't even feel it anymore. Um, but actually, they're like, yeah, everyone gets knocked. Um, and experienced divers don't build up a tolerance or anything. Um, they just get used to it. Okay. So you're knocked right now, mate. <laughs> What they found out was that experienced divers still had the effects of narcosis, but they were better at managing the effects. Much like oh, an alcoholic, what's an alcoholic? No, no, no. Uh, uh, will function better with a fresh, uh, better, better than, than. A than a freshman after a few pints. That was like us last week. <laughs> with Apex. Yeah, yeah. Me nursing a single one. And I'm like, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> anyway. Yes, so you know they still have the same amount of narcotics in them, but it's you know more. The more experienced diver is better at functioning more properly because they're used to it. The body has yes. maintained it; it's the same. So the researchers also found out that even though the effects of narcosis may feel like they've gone away as you ascend, you're not even when you get out the water. Yeah. So the lipid theory basically said that yeah, if you feel narked, just ascend a little and it'll go away, and. Yes, to a certain extent, but they still found out that divers, even after they got an out of the water, they still actually had that effect. They just don't. Are you sure they didn't smoke a joint before they went diving? <laughs> uh, that's a completely other thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically, no diving then driving. Um, the effects of narcosis were still found up to 30 minutes after a diver had surfaced. So unfortunately, scientists have proven that you can't just swim up a little bit to alleviate narcosis. And no matter how much someone brags that they don't get narked, they do. Um, they're just a functioning deep sea diver. <laughs> they're a functioning knock. <laughs> yeah. No, I do. <laughs> um, but anyway, what do you think? Do you notice when you get knocked? What do you do when you're weird underwater? Um, or have you not felt her gentle touch before? Uh, what depths do you get knocked at, um, do you think? Above uh, sea water. <laughs> a lot of people say, oh, it's 30 meters, but some people I've heard at like 18 or even less, it's right, just... It's, it's all body, isn't it? It all depends on what your chemicals. Do you know what, though? I, th I know exactly what you need to do to get rid of your narcosis. Here we go. On the boat, you should have nice, Full English. Full English. Yeah, like a hangover. So have a nice full English. <clears throat> Problem solved. Anyway, let's talk about narcosis. And I'm a professional comments. scuba diver, so <laughs> take me for face value. <laughs> um, and whilst you're tapping away at your keyboard, then you might as well then click on that little subscribe button because you're clearly a passionate scuba diver who wants to know more about it. Thank you for watching, and of course, safe diving. Well, if they're watching our channel, then definitely we are the hardcore UK <laughs> scuba diving. It's rate. free to subscribe, we won't charge you anything. Yet. After caffeine, alcohol, and nicotine, cannabis is the most commonly used recreational drug in the world. In 2010, a study by the UK's DDRC found out that 400 of our out of, sorry, 427 UK divers, that 22% of them 
like to uh, smoke on a jazz cigarette? There Should must be say, more. I'm a, I'm a 